This is the radar equation, or really it's the amount of power a radar receives given some system parameters like transmit power and a target. But you could also rearrange this in different ways to find the range or other terms. This is an incredibly important equation, and you'll see it all the time when working with radar. So to understand it, let's break this mess of symbols down into a few components. Before we get in though, after watching this video, check out the Python notebook in the description where you can play around with this concept right in your browser, and there's even some challenge problems at the end to solidify your learning. Okay, so let's dive into the first section, which defines our signal's power as it's traveling toward the target. For a given system, we'll transmit a signal that has some power, PT, measured in watts. Let's say the system outputs one kilowatt. So if we were using an isotropic antenna, or one that radiates equally in all directions, some of the power would go in all directions, and only a small part of it would actually make it to our target. And if you think about this section on our radiating surface that actually reaches the target, it becomes a smaller and smaller percentage of the radiating surface as the radius increases. And by the way, even though I'm showing this in two dimensions, the power would actually radiate out like a sphere. So we can say that the amount of power that actually reaches the target is the transmit power over the sphere's surface area, or in other words, pt over 4 pi r squared, where the 4 pi r squared is that sphere surface area. Now, that's a lot of power not hitting the target, so in a real system, you'd probably want to build an antenna that tries to direct as much of this energy toward a single point rather than radiating it in all directions. This would actually increase your transmit signal strength, or in other words, give you some gain, GT, which is a scalar that we often refer to in decibels. And this gain can be a really large number depending on the antenna, sometimes 30 dBi, which is a factor of 1000, or even 40 dBi, which is a factor of 10,000. And if you're not familiar with this decibel versus linear scale, the Python notebook in the description will have a section about it. For this, I'll choose 30 dBi. We can then multiply that by the power seen at the target to account for the directionality of the antenna, and this gives us that first component of the radar equation, or the amount of power that will be in the area that reaches a target at a range r. So if we're transmitting one kilowatt of power with an antenna gain of 30 dBi, and a target at a range of one kilometer, the power seen at the target would be about 0.08 watts per meter squared. Pretty small even with that high gain antenna and large output power. Okay, on to the second part. This second component defines our target and the path back to the radar. Now you may notice that we again have this one over four pi r squared or one over the surface area of a sphere, which makes sense because the signal has to travel this distance r back to the antenna for us to detect the target. But there's also this sigma term, or the radar cross section, which is measured in meters squared or just another area, and this is basically how the radar sees a target. So for example, if your radar was looking head on at a sphere, the sphere would just look like a circle, right? So the radar cross section would just be the area of that circle, or pi r squared. Now, if the target was a human, on the other hand, the radar would see a silhouette of a human, which I'm pretty sure has a much more complicated equation. This radar cross-section, or RCS, determines how much the signal bounces off the target, and in general, the larger the target, the more energy is reflected, so it'll go in the numerator. For this, let's just use a simple number, one meter squared. The units for this whole second component will be meters squared over meters squared, which will both cancel out and give us a unitless scalar term that'll make our signal even smaller. In this case, it comes out to about negative 71 dB, or an incredibly small factor of 8 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, so the last term. This is known as the effective aperture, and it basically represents how effective our antenna is at receiving signals. You can relate it to the receive antenna gain and the frequency of the signal it's receiving by this equation. So we could just rearrange this to get an equation for our effective aperture. Now luckily many radars use the same antenna for transmitting and receiving, so we could just take this GT from earlier and plug it straight in for our receive gain, and if we assume that the signal we're transmitting is a 3 GHz signal, that's also the frequency that we'll receive, so we can plug that in to get an effective aperture of 0.79 meters squared. The fact that this has units in meters squared means you can kind of visualize this as the area of the antenna that the signal sees, or an electrical area. Okay, so now we have the numbers for all three components. To plug these back into our equation, let's first get them all back into linear units. 
So for a radar transmitting one kilowatt of power at a frequency of three gigahertz through an antenna with a gain of 30 dBi, and you're looking at a one meter squared target one kilometer away, we would receive negative 83 dBW back or negative 83 decibels relative to one watt, which equals five times 10 to the negative ninth watts, which is a super tiny amount. Being able to have a system that's able to transmit such a huge amount of power, then milliseconds later detect that tiny of a power, just goes to show how cool and impressive radar systems are. And that's it. That's the radar range equation. This has been the start of a series I'll be doing called the Animated Radar Cheat Sheet, which will be a series of short videos explaining the super common equations you'll encounter when working with radar. What I showed here is just one form of the radar equation, and it can be expanded to work in other contexts, like weather radar, which I'll talk about later. If you want to see more like this, consider subscribing and let me know in the comments which equations you'd like to learn more about. These videos will be posted more frequently than my longer, more in-depth content radar and RF concepts, and you can find the playlist here. Thank you so much for watching.